Good morning. Today, the church remembers St. Casimir. He's a Polish prince that lived in the 15th century. He's known as the defender of the poor. Our entrance antiphon. In your strength, O Lord, the just one rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his soul's desire. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we begin, we seek this, uh, the intercession of this saint, who is the patron of Poland and Lithuania, to also watch over our countries, especially in the area where, they're, where they live, that peace may reign upon their lands, and for our sins that have caused division, hurt, and violence, we ask the Lord's pardon and healing. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, to serve you is to reign. Grant that with the help of St. Casimir's intercession, we may constantly serve you in holiness and justice. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him, the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Aramean had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Neman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her my mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Neman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Neman sent out, taking along 10 silver talents, 600 gold pieces, and 10 festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter, which read, With this letter, I am sending my servant Neman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a God with power over life and death, that his, this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisa, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, why have you turned your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisa's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your face will heal, and you will be clean. 
But Nehemiah went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God. He would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus and Abana and Parpar greater than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servant came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophets had told to you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, was and be clean, so do you know, so do you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunk into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His face became again like the face of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Our response, a thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and see the face of God? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory. I hope in, in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him, there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Praise to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which your town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. It's funny how people who rejected Jesus rejected him, not because he was teaching something new, but because he was going back to the basics. He was teaching them that their worship of God is 
empty of meaning if their hearts were not sincere. Similarly, as the general's advisor said to Naaman, if the prophet had asked you to do something extraordinary, physically challenging, you would have done it. But what he asked of you was, was not something physical or extraordinary, but it required humility, a humble heart. That, perhaps, is more challenging. As we enter the third week of Lent, this is a good reminder for us to re-examine you know, the kind of fast or the sacrifice or the abstinence that we're doing. Are we, do, are we doing merely physical observance? Of, or do we pay attention to what's going on in our hearts, our attitudes toward one another? For what we desire to discipline in our spiritual journey is not just the flesh, right? It's not just the flesh, but equally important, it's our hearts, our attitudes. This is what the prophet Micah taught the people. O oh, my people, you have been told what the Lord asks of you, only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. So let us learn to discipline our minds and our hearts this land, that we may be transformed into the heart and the mind of God. Let us pray. Let us pray then for ourselves, for fallen away Christians, and those yet to hear the good news, for the gift of faith to believe and to trust. We pray to the Lord. We pray also that during this Lent, we may learn to be more and more faithful to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, that we may be obedient to his small, gentle voice. We pray to the Lord. For the success of the peace process in the Middle East, in Ukraine, and in all parts of our world torn by war and violence, we pray to the Lord. For those who suffer, refugees, migrants, and all under a doctor's care, we pray to the Lord. And this Mass being offered for the repose of the soul of Charlie Cunningham. So for him, for all who have died, and all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. And for your intentions. And so for all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you who sent us your Son to be our Savior, hear the prayers of your children, and in your goodness grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of 
of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of Blessed Casimir, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His by your gracious gift each year, your faithful away to sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made me pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the air for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also Charlie Cunningham and our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Pap Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With one heart and one faith, together we pray, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said through your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
our communion antiphon, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of Blessed Casimir, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be made shares in the divine nature. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a wonderful day, everyone.